Hi everyone, today we're going to be solving AQA GCSE Chemistry Higher Tier Paper 1 Question Paper. Today we're going to be solving June 2020 Part 1 from question number 1 to question number 3. This question is about the structure and bonding. Two substances have intermolecular force between particles. Okay, intermolecular force exists between molecules. So, Diamond is macromolecular, magnesium is uh, metallic, and sodium chloride is ionic. All three are giant structures, whereas the polythene and water, they are molecular substance. So, they will have intermolecular force between them. Table 1 shows the structure of three compounds. We can see carbon dioxide, magnesium oxide, we can see silicon dioxide. The question says, compare the structure and bonding of three compounds, carbon dioxide, magnesium oxide, and silicon dioxide. In this question, we have six marks. To score the six marks, we can write an answer where we can first say that the carbon dioxide and the silicon dioxide are made of atoms, whereas the magnesium oxide is made of ions. Carbon dioxide and silicon dioxide are covalently bonded by sharing of electrons between them, whereas magnesium oxide gives magnesium gives two electrons to oxygen, and oxygen takes two electrons to form negative ion. Magnesium gives two electrons to form positive ion. We can also say that magnesium oxide and silicon dioxide they are mac uh, they are giant molecule. They are uh, macromolecular giant structures whereas carbon dioxide is a simple molecule so carbon dioxide will have intermolecular forces between the molecules so these points will cover up the six marks guys any other uh, extra points I'm gonna write it down for you So guys, this, this answer has like more than six points. You can choose any of the six points to write for your main exam. And you're going to score a full mark. This question is about metals and the reactivity cities. Which two statements are properties of most transition metals? Transition metals are not soft. They form colorless compound. Transition metals form colorful compounds. They find iron with different charges. This is correct. They have high melting point, correct. Transition metals have high densities. A student added copper metal to the colorless silver nitrate solution. The student observed pale gray crystal forming, the solution turning blue. Explain how these observations show that silver is less reactive than copper. Here we can see that Displacement reaction is occurring, all right? So the answer can be written as the gray crystals are silver. Copper ions are produced, which are blue. The copper ions, the copper displaces the silver ions and enters the solution as copper ions. A student is given three metals, X, Y, Z, to identify the metals are magnesium, iron, and copper. Plan an investigation to identify three metals by comparing their reactions with dilute hydrochloric acid. Basically, when you're going to be reacting magnesium, iron, and copper with dilute hydrochloric acid, first thing, copper does not react with dilute hydrochloric acid. Okay, so when we will react copper with dilute hydrochloric acid, we will see there will be no reaction and there will be, there will be no temperature change or no bubbles being formed. When you're going to react it, react to dilute hydrochloric acid with magnesium and iron, because magnesium is more reactive, it's going to form bubbles more rapidly compared to that of iron. Iron is going to form bubbles, but it's going to be little less. To keep this particular experiment fair, we can use same volume and same concentration of acid and for the metal part we can use the same amount or same moles of metal
Metal M has two isotopes. Table 2 shows the mass number and percentage abundances of the isotopes. So we can see mass number. We can see percentage abundance. Calculate the relative atomic mass AR of metal M. To calculate the relative atomic mass, we are going to multiply the mass number with the percentage abundance. Then we're going to repeat it for the second mass number. Then we're going to divide the whole thing by 100, which will give us the relative atomic mass. So we mentioned it up until one decimal place. So 204.4 is the answer. This question is about silver iodide. Silver iodide is produced in the reaction between silver nitrate solution and silver iodide solution. The equation for the reaction is silver nitrate with sodium iodide, silver iodide, and sodium nitrate. The student investigated the law of conservation of mass. Pour silver nitrate solution into a beaker labeled A. Pour sodium iodide solution into a beaker labeled B. Measure the masses of both beakers and their contents. Pour the solution from beaker A into beaker B into beaker A. Measure the masses of both beakers and their contents again. So beaker A and contents. After mixing 108.22. Beaker B and contents. Mass after mixing has decreased. Because we poured beaker B's content. Beaker B's content into beaker A. So this one's mass increased. Whereas this one's mass decreased. Explain how the results demonstrate the law of conservation of mass. So it's all about total mass before and total mass after. So the total mass before 78.26 plus 78.50 which is equals to 156.76 and the total mass after this will be 108.22 plus 48.54 which is equals to 156.76 so we can see in both of these we have same mass that means the mass is conserved now, all right, explain how the results demonstrate the law of conservation of mass. So we're going to write a comment. So we're going to say the mass of the product equals the mass of the reactants. Suggest so how the student could separate the insoluble silver iodide from a mixture at the end of the reaction. So the silver iodide that is produced is actually insoluble. So the student can just simply filter to get the silver iodide. The student purified the separated silver iodide. The student used this method. Rinse the silver iodide with distilled water. Warm the silver iodide. Suggest so one impurity that was removed by rinsing with water. So when we, you know, when we rinsed it with water, we removed the sodium nitrate that was sticking with the, the sodium nitrate solution that was sticking with the silver iodide. So that is why the student warmed the silver iodide. The student warmed the silver iodide to remove any residual water. Calculate the percentage atomic economy for the production of silver iodide in this reaction. Silver nitrate plus sodium iodide producing silver iodide. Atom atomic economy takes into consideration percentage atomic economy takes into consideration the amount of product that is produced divided by the total amount of reactant. So, the amount of useful product that is produced divided by the total amount of reactant. And that will give us 
percentage atom economy when we are going to multiply it by 100. So in this case, silver iodide 235 divided by 170 plus 150 into 100. So this gives us 73. 0.4375%. Now the question says that we have to give it up until three significant figure. So to match it up until three significant figure, our answer is going to be 73.4%. Give one reason why reactions with a higher atomic economy are used in the industry. Reactions with high atom economy have economical importances. So they are, you know, more sought after and they only produce useful product and does not produce use, you know, by products. So the answer can be written as, all right, guys, that's all for this particular video. Best of luck for your exam and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.